Hey troops, this is Bob from The Truth You See, and I've been meaning to do this for quite a long time. I'm gonna critique an older video from Rob Bell called Bullhorn. This is from his NUMA video series, and it's one of these uh, teachings that he does that, that just really doesn't make sense in light of scripture. So I wanted to, uh, to, to talk about it. First thing I wanna mention is uh, this character that he builds up on this guy who's, who's Bullhorn guy. Um, first thing is a real, real crucial point. Um, anybody involved in open air preaching and all, all the people that I've ever worked with and the times I've gone on to do street ministry, we always go out in teams and at least two people. We see the example from scripture that Jesus sends out the disciples in two. So he first off misrepresents street ministry or open air preachers by having this guy be a lone person. And of course, uh, <laughs> he definitely makes the guy look about as nerdy as possible. So let's go ahead and watch some of Bullhorn, and I will uh, tell you what I think in light of scripture of Rob Bell's teaching. So I'm going to see a band with my friends, and we're walking into the venue, and up ahead on the sidewalk out front is this guy, he's got one of those bullhorns, and he's yelling all this stuff, and at first I can't hear what he's saying, but as I get closer I hear the word sin and burn and hell and repent and then I hear the word Jesus. He's got all these pamphlets and he's quoting these Bible verses about the anger and wrath of God and how if I don't repent I'm gonna pay for it for eternity and and how I might die. I might die tonight. This might be my only chance and then I might spend forever in misery as I burn in hell. And no one is stopping to hear more and no one wants any of his pamphlets. So I want to talk to the bullhorn guy. Bullhorn guy, I don't think it's working. Sin, burn, hell, repent, Jesus. Did you know I can take those five words, cross-reference them back into scripture, and find the beautiful story of how Jesus Christ took the wrath of God from my sins? The only additional thing I would add to that would be the law, which basically shows God's standard to which he's measuring our life. The fact that Rob Bell doesn't think it's working is irrelevant. It's not an issue here. The fact is, this bullhorn character is obeying God and he's proclaiming the gospel to the lost and dying world. That's what's important. If Rob had an issue with the content, sin, burn, hell, repent, Jesus, if he had an issue with that, he, we could talk about that. But he can't take issue with that because that content is correct from Scripture. The message is sound. Rob doesn't like the messenger or, messenger or the technique. And that's irrelevant to the fact that the gospel is being proclaimed. All the yelling and the judgment and the condemnation, I don't think it's working. I actually think it's making things worse. I don't think it's what Jesus had in mind. Condemnation is another concept from Scripture. It's what we're born into. We're born into this fallen creation. We need grace. We need someone to save us from this wretched state we're in. And once we're saved, and once we're redeemed, and we're born again and given a new heart, this heart now hates sin. And so, if an open-air preacher is sounding angry, could be two reasons for that. First off, they're yelling because they want to be heard. That's why they got a bullhorn, Rob. And they may come off angry because they hate sin. With being born again, you're given a new heart. Sin that you used to love, you now hate because you're being molded into the image of Christ. And see, see bullhorn guy, you're... It's confusing for my friends and I because some are Christians and some aren't, but we just don't get it. We just don't understand what all the condemning and, and the converting, we don't understand what it has to do with Jesus' message. So the gospel is confusing to Rob Bell and his friends. Um, I tell you what, if you happen upon an open air preacher with some friends of yours that aren't saved, what a great opportunity to kind of do the bad cop, good cop deal. Turn around in a loving manner and talk to your friends like, wow, that guy seems a bit harsh, screaming about hell and everything. But you know what? The Bible says that it's appointed a man to live once and then face judgment. So I think what he's saying could be true. We should probably consider what he's saying. That's a great opportunity. But instead, you're going to condemn the content of the open-air preacher's message? Whoa, Rob, come on, work with 
someone who's proclaiming the truth. If it's the truth, it's the truth. You may not like the delivery, but if it's the truth, you can use it for the glory of God. You don't understand all the condemnation and converting? Read scripture, read Romans. In Romans 8, it says there's no more condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Well, in order for that to be true, there must have been condemnation prior to what is explained in Romans 8. Read the book of Romans, Rob. It'll tell you exactly the gospel message and how it works. Converting, is that confusing to you? Read John 3. Nicodemus talks to Jesus at night, and he talks about being born again. That's conversion. We talk about the new man being a new creation. It's all over Scripture. Read your Bible. And, and to be honest, it's confusing for me because you and I end up getting painted with the same brush. I mean, didn't Jesus say that he came to save, not to condemn? Like that story in the Bible, the book of John, where that woman is caught in adultery and the religious leaders like drag her in in front of Jesus and they've essentially condemned her to die. And, and what does Jesus say to her? He says to her, I don't condemn you. In this part, we see clearly that Rob Bell is concerned about what the world thinks of him. After all, he doesn't want to be painted with the same brush as Bullhorn Guy. But we see on the Sermon on the Mount that Jesus says that they are going to hate us for his sake. So we're not to be concerned about what the world thinks. Then he goes to John 8, the woman caught in adultery, and let me read 8.11. And Jesus said to her, Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. That's the full passage. The ending part is repentance, which is what the bullhorn guy is preaching. Rob Bell shortchanges the, the passage and ends it, neither do I condemn you. We're called the repentance, Rob. It's very simple. It's all through Scripture. I mean, that, that's why so many of us are so fascinated with Jesus, because he never stops insisting that God really, really loves us exactly as we are. I mean, isn't that what draws you to him? That's what draws me. Jesus' love is super attractive. There's no doubt about it. But it's because of the grace he extends us. And Rob, when you shortchange scripture and leave out the passage here that says, and sin no more, you're doing a huge injustice. You say right here that Jesus loves us just the way we are. You need to support that in scripture. I don't find that he loves us just the way we are. As a matter of fact, <laughs> I didn't love me just the way I was. I love the fact that God is doing a work in my life and he's changing this wretched person into being more Christ-like. Never perfect this side of heaven, but he's doing a work and I praise God for that. And see, all I can figure out, Bullhorn Guy, is that you think you're giving people the good news. But the problem is, it doesn't come across that way. It doesn't appear very loving. And when Jesus is asked, what's the most important thing? Jesus' response is to love, love God with everything that you have and then love those around you in the same kind of way. Jesus doesn't separate loving God and loving others. For Jesus, everything hangs on these two. And so the defining mark of a Christian is love. Okay, we get the fact that Rob doesn't understand tough love, and I've talked about some points on that already. But let's look at this next part where he says that the Bible or Jesus doesn't differentiate between loving God and loving our neighbor. That is just completely wrong. The scripture says that we're to love the Lord our God with our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and we're to love our neighbor as ourself. Two complete different kind of examples of love. We're going to love the Lord God wholeheartedly huger than our neighbor. So this, this point that he's making goes against clear scripture that you see that there are a different type of love. Loving our neighbor is kind of a self-preservation love. It comes from the fact that what's good for me is good for my neighbor. So if the good news is good for me, I'm going to tell him the gospel message. That's how we're loving our neighbor. This is clearly goes against scripture. And he doesn't back it up with any other scripture. And a little further on in this clip, he's gonna elaborate on this point, and we'll talk about this again. <laughs> 